Angelina just pick. popped up in. Possibility trial is not that popular. If you're able to get her with something, a lot of push. Ten seconds remaining. Any Five other four position? Of there's first or, uh, first spirit. Still made in. Dire team pick. Reactionary. Yeah. I like the defensive X's. So it yesterday. To This time can counter. Ten yep. seconds remaining. Potentially. Still. Five seconds remaining. Even more high ground defense, well, right? So the uh, power. Reserve time. Right, but. We did, high we, we did also see the the weakness in him. The fact you're able to have that initial, uh, like that quick jump in initial. Tanka took time for his bow to really be effective, and it was reliant on. Team Secret to sort of be like lagging in the to not be able just to just once the four stuff came out it wasn't anywhere. Team Secret doesn't have the same kind of with the jump in style heroes. Obviously, Queen of they have it with her, but you're not going to say she's going to start taking out Luna. jump in, start taking out a fight. Beyond that, Team Secrets turn to you still get the push off looking. Surely this sets us at the same tempo that we saw from. Game number one, where NP are going to be more of the aggressors, pressure the towers to go high ground, while Team Secret, thanks to Joel being Ten seconds carries them, go ahead and play for Lake. Perhaps, Five but he remaining. also has two, there's two ways for them to deal with BKB on the dire side, and also Queen of Pain doesn't require as much time as a Reserve poker. time. Like, way earlier. Couldn't last. Could. Are being protected. Now, Alina 4 position is right up a alley. Are we thinking that is a support, or would you leave it? Because we could still take a, a, a bit of a turn here with NP strategy. They could go for a more later game mid if they wish to. I think sure. Alina's. Very likely that Queen of. And they, they still need a better uh, roaming initiative. Something to actually... Lena is probably not off that against... How do you keep pain in one position? Right now it's the root from the Trinket, or it's Batrider Lasso. Chaining stuns from the... Enough for you. At least not in the early... Certainly does dominate. seem like our, our duo team. That's a lot more... Con a lot more free. Dire Island team stuff. ban. I suppose Enigma is also if that three position would be an option. There's not all. Okay, so I know there's actually a fair amount. Ten seconds remaining. But not everything. Hi, right, and Enigma. Darkseer, another Dire really great high ground pick. defender. Save options. That, that was one of the combinations we saw yesterday. I don't know if it was from Team Secret or not, but having the double iron shells, it might have been EG, uh, where they ran the darks here and the Kunker together. X mark them back into a double iron shell and just no way to. Ten seconds Think remaining. Game number one, really neat. You're really okay with NP running the same kind of Five tempo seconds. of Whoa. taking over early game and pushing to high ground? Team Secret. I think they have a much better lineup. Uh, with the loot. Really, really good for them. Much better than the Bristleback. Lena, I think, is incredibly good, too. So I think they're trying to set up for a similar game. Or style, but Ten with slightly seconds heroes. Remaining. They still have the team fight to back it up. They still have... Five seconds remaining. A bat in. Nice protection hero against the bat rider. A lot of room for the queen to be able to wiggle around here. NP's last pick of Warlock. Merlin, you sound kind of down with this. Better high ground uh, pusher. Abba, still though. got some team fight in there, but I believe in Abba. Abba, I believe in Abba. pressures Luna all game. You can't eclipse safely really sure. ever, and it's also really good at dealing with Warlock. Two ways to get rid of, rid of the fatal bonds. I'm actually leaning towards MP. I actually think MP are going to have a better time in this game, which is better. But it's the it's the team fight. 
the initial pop and the get first kills, I think it's better for them. Uh, and so I'm, is it the is it the Luna? Is it the fact that this hero can go high ground a lot better, and that's what NP really me, stalled out the, the Luna is able to capitalize more on what the space the Warlock and the Dream Protector is going to create. And remaining. this game looks like a lot better game for a Bat Rider to actually do something. So for that front, I think their engagement will be better than the. Oh, after then. I can't believe I can't believe it. After seeing Bristlebank last game where he had no counters and I know. just got crushed. I know. I I but hey, I right, right now I'm there. trying to be the only person with a hundred percent win rate on this panel. That's a good point, Toby. Can't argue with those kinds of stats. Well <laughs> I'm gonna end up leaning with Team Secret here. I think after game number one it does seem like uh and closing out this end, but we'll have to see. We're gonna go into our draft for game number two, or excuse me, our game for game number two. We've got L D and Gods. Gods, you know what they say, stats don't lie. Stats have another good But perhaps day or Toby two. does. <laughs> I'm not feeling it for MP right now. I mean, that's such a rough game one to have to bounce back from. You have such a big lead. You probably feel like the game's in the bag at various points. You've got these unstoppable bristle back, TA. Somehow, don't close it out in 60, 70 minutes. That's like the worst kind of loss you can have in a Dota 2 tournament to start the day. So, we'll see if MP's draft in game number two is something battle. better. Right, the team's entering the field of battle now in order to get to a game three. NP find a way to take down Secret with a, a very different kind of draft here. A lot of hero pick changes. Not quite as much high ground defense, it feels like, but still very tanky. A lot of survival, uh, survivability for them, and perhaps a bit stronger lanes this time. Walking awfully close to a courier, but get eyes on it. Well, it does feel like this tree is going to be huge for NP if they're to win this game. AUI really has to take over. He did it in game two yesterday uh, in the opening match that NP had and was able to push them to a game three with some fantastic roaming. Got a courier kill, found a lot of early ganks. Uh, they also had the, I think it was support Nyx that game for Pylai Dai setting things up. But with no real, uh, I mean, Warlock not known for his roaming prowess, it's really on the tree to have any kind of laning slash kill opportunity here for MP is uh, cosplaying as a lumberjack, just chopping down all these trees, trying to protect himself from this treant protector. So, sure, he can somewhat limit what that treant's going to do. He's not even trying to go for his rune. He's like, this is more important. The rune's not safe. I don't have supports here. Let's let's not go for a rune if we can't do that. Then. You're a here we go. Me. We're going to get things back underway. No more lights, and now camera and action. Resume their setup here for the lading phase. Standard wards being dropped down for all. We're trying to protect these off lanes as much as possible. And lane ward. Make sure that they can farm a bit more safely. So it looks like Seeker going to be running that off lane to bat in. MSS going to be going to the bottom lane as the bat rider once again. Neither off lane are getting a whole lot of help, at least not initially. So as I said, Pilot Eye is going to make his way down bottom. So it looks like he might lend a helping hand here to in the end. Yeah, this is, we saw this a bit in the last patch, these like Warlock dual off lanes. A lot of that was with the Legion Commander. Legion Commander's kind of fallen off this patch, hasn't had much success uh, with some of the Shrine changes and all that. And Batrider seems to be back a hero that perhaps doesn't rely on the Shrines as much as some of those other like tanky melee off laners. So perhaps we're going to see the, yeah, the Warlock pairing up with some different combos. At least that for now, that's what we're seeing in this game. Punk of making a room around the mid lane, but it's top lane where AUI2000 is going to start things off. He unveils himself. He's going to put that early pressure on Kezu. Not really a killable target at this stage, but certainly a hero who can pressure quite a bit. Keeps on giving him the big punches. I like this from AUI. It's one of the underrated aspects of Tree. Everyone talks about the hero's roaming, about like just going invis, scouting, sniping careers, but just going to the safe lane and punching. An off laner, there's no real, like, there's few better supports to actually zone enemy off lane, immediately off lane, as that is, than like a Dream Protector. And that's what we're gonna see him prioritize for the early game. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, though, MSS in danger. He's gotta salve up and take the Warlock heal just to survive a potential first blood. And meanwhile, top Kezu also dropping low. So both off laners, both three positions under heavy duress in the early laning stage. I love seeing the changes in the offlane. Kezu goes to lane with eight tangos and a salve. No, Old school. Yeah, no more like poor man shield, four tangos. You gotta get a lot of regen. And he's going very aggressive. He's really actually taking the fight to this lunar tree. And 
because of the fact that he's gone just different build. He gets the early magic stick as well to try and help him out. He doesn't even get many stick charges other than like the lucid beams, which isn't all that much, but he just wants any early game item possible. I have, may have thought he was going to deal with the bat rider. But so far, not proving to be the case. Because he can to take punishment, but dishes it back in turn. Has that extra apotic shield to work with? Both sides using up all their regen. One Tango left for the Luna. And Kezu just with two Tangos left for himself, but he's kind of got the health advantage as well as the magic stick for a little bit of extra heal, so definitely see advantage going his way for now. So, MSS applying pressure bottom, wants to make a move on Puppy, could be the first blood opportunity though. He doesn't quite have the damage just yet, he gets on him with the five Napalm stacks and will secure the kill. Gapsword MP on the chase. Do they even get a retaliatory strike? Not clear just yet if they can catch MSS. He's got that wind lace, an extra bit of move speed, but not gonna matter. Kunkka will decapitate him with one last swing of the sword, and the one land we haven't looked at yet has become a bit of a romp. Mid one just aching over as the Queen of Pain. Already 19 and 6. Fada, only 11 and 1. Even gonna jump in, he sees Fada has no mana right now to stun him and takes advantage. He is dominating. That is, yeah. Even went for the, the extra points in Shadow Strike here. So. Yep. Gets the second point. Probably won't see any further points. This is probably like in a mat like, matchup where you're dominating and really not having any like kind of support influence. Getting the second point in Shadow Strike is very advantageous winning your lane. So yeah, he's looking to continue his dominance over this. This is without any major support involvement it and, feels like and, and it doesn't really feel like they can go and help him too much the warlock was there earlier highlight i did what he could but aui has to stay top to protect envy or kezu's gonna bully him yep this is a lane where kezu is owning he is getting up in the face he may have overstepped his boundaries he has got some stick charges and a salve needs to find a way to perhaps get that salve off and he will juke in the trees and aui able to cancel it here though with the lead seed chase He's got the boots advantage, but won't be able to get the kill, but importantly, stopping that. If he gets the full salve off, lane is lost at that point, hardcore. And that was a, a, an additional salve that Kezu brought out, so not having his boots. No shrine yet. No shrine yet. May just want to go back to base. Yeah, he's pretty low, so probably see him go back to base and just TP out again. More aggression on mid, Vata. This time with a lot more health. He's got the bottle. He's got an illusion. Through. He's a much... Dirty at force in this mid lane now as we do see him stabilizing a bit on CS. Should Quap be dominating this matchup quite this hard? Uh, not, I wouldn't think so, not this hard. I think Lena does a bit better than what we're seeing here. Perhaps there's just like a bad level one creep block. Maybe mid one just dominated the first wave or two. And once you get that like first lane or two advantage, suddenly it can be a snowballing matchup in the way it plays out, so. Remember, there is living armor potentially later on this game for AUI to try and assist that lane, but Thor hasn't really seen much help from Bada as he's getting caught in the mid lane. x Thor is there. Reinforcements coming in. Highlight die. Ready. Available to save Bada. Still Bada getting bullied all the same as Kezu. Meanwhile, takes some punishment of his own up top. Envy on the chase out of mana for now, but AUI keeps the punching happening. For auto attacks here and there, just poking Kezu. He manages to get off that last hit shield. Lucent Beam just had the mana, just barely able to clip him with it. And AUI again finding openings as Tree. Plating Steve. And he held his stick until Abaddon used that last shield. I was like, alright, got one more shield to save me. And it gave Envy the mana to use a Lucent Beam because of the stick charge. Now the Quad Bolt, there are stick charges here. Danger for Fada. Does mid one want to commit? He actually pump fakes it and. Not gonna go. Been a long range attempt. Perhaps a tiny bit short on damage, I wanna say. I think he just landed it, but where there was gonna be just enough was maybe another matter. But how did he kill Fata now with the rain drop? Both mids having these big difference and Pump Room will be a fight for the two mid laners. Uh, nice done. Fata though, because put by his horn and now he's in a lot of trouble. Very far away from the tower. He's, he's okay. gonna stand yeah. his ground though. He can, he, if mid one came any closer, it would have been a kill. Let's have the Laguna Blade ready. And with the constant living armor, it, it really is not a 2v1, even though yeah. it might feel that way. Now, Warlock coming in, so if anything, perhaps at this point, MP, if they want to leave the Warlock around, they have the 3v2 advantage in the mid lane. If Kunkka hit that torrent like half a second earlier, mid one could have perhaps blinked on the rune uh, and stolen the rune from Fata and gone for the kill, but uh, unfortunately, he did pick up the DD rune and bottle it before the torrent actually landed. So both mid laners with a lot of kill potential, up against fairly squishy opponents, but neither one able to strike gold just yet. As far as 
Bottom lane goes. You do see pretty much free farm right now for the troll. MP not being contested at all. They're going to look to change that with AUI making his move down here. But both targets are fairly tanky. Both the puppy on the Jakiro and the, that troll in particular with the blind. Oh, Korea. But the uh, courier, not so survivable. AUI will find another one. That's two tree games in a row where he's converted early rotations into courier kills. The, the impact he's had on this hero this tournament cannot be overstated. Being able to kill flying courier is one of the unique factors of the screen protector hero. You can't even speed burst away like you can a Ricky when he Ricky two shots it potentially, but you can you can speed burst it between hits. Three, nope, he roots that courier. Bottom lane, we are seeing it looks like a lot of pulls from Puppy. He's actually I mean, he's taking his 10% this game. He's got 17 CS as a Jake hero. Like that's some pretty crazy farm to have in the early game for Jakiro, but definitely translated into major items for him. He's just going to get him his boots gold and all that. Pretty stagnant landing stage aside from the tree's movement. We haven't really seen any big smoke opportunities yet. Yep. Uh, do you expect either team to make a move soon? It's hard to make moves because the lanes are being pressured hard in other ways. Like Kezu is just continually going top. He's bought like three or four salves this game and just keeps running at this Luna to contest Envy's farm. I really like how Kezu's put this played this lane. Unfortunately, he did die that once, which kind of meant Envy still had a good time. Envy's free farming, 39 CS, 21 freaking denies. Look at that stack, though. Kezu yeah. is definitely looking to watch the goal for the team. Oh. And Bob's even gonna rotate. They, they do not want to give these creeps away to Envy. Okay. Perhaps even looking for a kill. Like, Envy's gonna see this and want to come in and contest it, but Queen of Pain Sonic Wave could be the turnaround, but... See if Yapsol can latch on with an X. Hard to get that kind of hat when it's daytime with the vision. MP sets in danger. Is going to TP out. This does free up the bottom lane as Lina has made a rotation of her own. That mirroring that movement, but back towards mid, the opposite way. Musical lanes have commenced. Secret. Looking to take those nukes, and they're going to do it here. Don't really see MP walking into this Queen of Pain. But they may try. Reinforcements arriving, though, as the tree comes in. And now they look to make the move. Envy gets caught. He's not quite able to rev up an Eclipse just yet. Thinks about it. Thinks twice. And now lets it go. And it's a swing and a miss. The chase on the Kezu continues. That was some control from mid one. He didn't even try and throw the ultimate onto Envy. He was just baiting out the Eclipse and then blinks out of there. And with no Eclipse, there's not a whole lot of help from any wise. The chase goes on. Has to overgrowth, to, but will save his own life for yeah. now in doing so. Oh. Yeah, Shadow Strike gets him in the end. Went for, Warlock was trying to get in there for a deny. Couldn't quite get there in time, but... So yeah, they they force out an overgrowth. Control. They force out an Eclipse. They yep. still get the kill. They take the neutral stack as well. The only real cost there is that Fada got the tower bottom. So not yep. too shabby for Secret. Not too shabby. They don't Radiant's follow it up with a tower of their own, though. So attack. in terms of objectives, it is a decent game for NP overall. Uh, and it's going to come down to what Secret can do during those cooldowns. There's no overgrowth, no Eclipse. Can they get a tower of their own? Uh, if they're not actually using those cooldowns to smoke up, get some kills, take objectives, ultimately it's not some, It's not really going to matter too much that they force those ultimates. The gods with a lull here in the action. Uh, talk to me about the respective strategies for this team. Look at the overall lineups, the way the Lady Sage has felt. Uh, heading the next 10, 20 minutes. Uh, where are the peaks? What, what are the goals for each team? Uh, and Secret, how do they approach the game? Yeah, so Secret really want to take a lot of towers this game in the early mid game. They're going to go for the fast flags on Troll. They've got an early turn Lands. coming out. Nice little kill. Checked off. Jumped by mid one to set up. I'm into Jakiro, like this is a hero you want to try to take early towers on. Has gone for a different build though, maxing out the ice part. I saw him holding skill points early on, and it is a very different approach to Puppy with well, the Jakiro play. You have the X to set it up, so yeah. you have a pretty reliable X into Torrent and then into Ice Pet. That's a long duration to be able to bring here and catch. And very short cooldown is one of the really crazy things about this spell level 4. A 9 second cooldown disabled for 2.5 seconds in AoE as well. Very valuable. Overgrowth bottom. Uh, however, this troll pretty tanky and gets the blind off. MP's gonna live, not doing the math on the MP side. And now Yapsa looking for the third round. Find the X support as well. Macro fire there too in AUI. Slinks away, but won't make it out. They burn down the tree, they get the kill. And... Mineral for not. Radiance middle tower is under attack. The vibe and tank his way through that one. Didn't quite have the damage for MP and... So, 
really for for M NP, I I'm, I'm starting to wonder when do we see MSS get involved? He he didn't have the easiest time uh, bottom. He's catching in the jungle. Grab the drums. Normally a more aggressive like item where you want to just take those early fights, uh, but not really able to find an opening yet. Moving around with the lasso and up against an Abaddon, it, it may be tough to find those openings. Level six Warlock is where their team fight attack. is formidable. Like they can match up to Secret if not out team fight them. Flips, Overgrowth, Chaotic Offering. They'll be very strong, but they haven't got that level six yet. So where the two would perhaps give it to Aoi to get the Overgrowth and oh, they want to take this fight. Yeah. Uh, AUI 2000 is looking like he wants to make a move in, but Kezu and MP very tanky, definitely so with the blind. Are going to be able to take that tower down. Mid one was lurking in the wings with the PD rune. So I think wise by NP, they did not take the fight as they almost certainly would have gotten blown up. Yep. They had a rock story, but that is not the case. They need to find a lane for this warlock. How close is he? Halfway. So. Could, could be quite a while, depending if they let him stay around in this yeah, lane. They're going to want to punish, punish him. There's the X. The torrent comes through. And meanwhile, mid one finding the solo kill. It looks like actually, no, had a bit of help mid. So that's two kills and potentially more. MSS wants to counter this. He's going to move on to Kezu. However, he will get X. Pull back a tiny bit. And now, still the borrow time ready. So Kezu survives. The initial push by NP. They'll go for round two. So while that was happening, Lena could go down. So a clear win for Secret, unless they can find some openings here. NP still holding that eclipse. Still looking for the opening, perhaps a bit gun shy after the whiff from earlier, and so not having an opening. Need some stuns to make like the ulti land, but overgrowth was already used, and that's the thing is it feels like they either need like the bats to get a good like, lasso flank and bait secret into trying to help that hero, or the tree somehow has to sneak up on them. Barring that, it's really yep. tough to find the big team fight opening. So really good maneuvering from Team Secret, getting them a tower, pickoffs, and they back off and. They were actually down all in. Anyway, it's going to be a real pestilence here. We're rooting Kezu. Yeah, but won't have the damage to kill him. Far off time almost off as well. Yeah. What? Where's Secret go next? They're going to have the plaids, like the arcane boots on Kunkka. They've got the Uranai mission. Like, they've got all these like good, cheap, cost effective early, early game items. I don't think they're ready to kind of like five man push down to some towers. And, and they might just be looking to try and take a Roche if they have that. If they like take down the tier one mid or get a kill. Absolutely. They're pretty good Roche to control. Puppy's just going to go for a Midas. He's playing the greedy support. But here is one of these heroes where there's no major item. If, as long as you're, if you're, you've got three or four teammates all going for early game items. You may as well go for Midas yourself. Like, yeah, you theoretically could have an early Arcane Boots or a mech himself, but you don't need too many Arcane Boots. You haven't really got the mana to support a mech, so guaranteeing some, like, more late-game item progression for Puppy is going to just be a fine part of the secret strategy overall. As long as you don't get too many Midases, that's the big thing here. Just one support going Midas, not a big deal. Right, a big, crucial moment for NP as they find themselves on the brink of elimination here from the Manila Masters. Need to take two in a row to bounce back. They've got the full team fight complement at the ready. The arsenal is fully stocked with now the Warlock ult online. But Secret know this, and they are playing a cool, calm, collected. They're not going to force the issue. They're content to take some neutrals here. Yeah, I think Troll wants his level 10. The talent's pretty nice. Either one, it's a lot of agi. Hey. Uh, but here's the opening on Tapata. I spent the yeah. start off. Hesitant, maybe hoping to bait out a big ult from NP, but not ready to just throw themselves headlong into that meat rack. Goes back to his ancient again. Looking to be a bit more efficient rather than just full five man commit on this tower that it seems NP are committed to defending. Very committed at that. Here yeah. he goes. With the troll level 10, you, the strength is pretty nice as well. If you're the frontliner, you may just want to stay alive. And yeah, he does get the strength. I like this a bit better. You see him there in that position where he's frontlining, hitting the tower. It's kind of a vulnerable position to be in. You've got good physical damage resistance with the Vlads and the, the uh, medallion on you, the Abaddon behind you, but the magic burst, like a lasso into Eclipse into Laguna, that oh, can bring oh you down. Chance. So extra health, I think, going to be more valuable than the Adji. Even though I'd say typically you do see trolls get the edge. How do you feel about the pace of this game, Gods? Is it is this slow farming, not really too many kills happening, favoring other teams? Say it's favoring Secret right now. They're the ones who have the Midas. They're the ones who are up against this big team fight, but they kind of want to avoid fighting. 
Uh-oh. This could be the turnaround, though, as we say that the boat comes out, and that's going to prevent any sort of follow-up to that initial duel. So not able to connect for a kill. Now the rock gets dropped pretty early at that. Do they have the follow-up, though? Rock dropped and MP hesitate. Secret just walk away, and now they're going to have a window where the boat will cool down. The rock will not be available for a long time. Yep. Perhaps they'll look to push the tempo on that. Dyer's top tower is under attack. To the, the really offensive, cautious rock from Pile I Die. There wasn't really any turnaround potential there. They just don't have like that big follow up. AUI's nowhere near a blink dagger on the tree. The bats blink is soon, and that's really the big one they're missing out on more than anything right now. So that's going to change the state of things for NP when they can force a fight. Like, the Yules on Lena's actually, like, Lena's gone for, like, a, an old-school build with this Yules pickup, something you used to see more of to try and start and get a catch. The range catch on the Yules is not great, though. Uh, it's not what it used to be many, many patches ago, so it's not a reliable uh, catch since you have to get nice and close. And the Bat Blink is going to be the big one. MSS has picked it up, fought a smoke as well, and he's going to be the one to try and force a fight. Needs to get a quick pull and try and not let the Abaddon get a shield on his lasso. Secret, of course, knowing that the Warlock Golem... Unavailable. We'll be looking to push mid, so perhaps MP can punish this. Luna's on the rotation, and AUI's there. Starts off with the overgrowth. The boat's gonna come out momentarily, helping to protect the team, keep it alive. Yep, so doesn't go down. Even though we go down, that's simply not enough. MP tanks it all, stands his ground, finally rooted, held in position at long last. That barrage of spells will bring them down. Fodder from the side, finds the good two hero stun, and looks for more with Kezu on the run. Two down. Secret have overplayed their hand, but perhaps MP, mid one can change the equation. No, he jumps in, and he will sacrifice himself as well. Apparently the golem is a red heron. NP do not need it to win team one. Yeah, they were ready to take that bite and almost wanted Secret to push with that golem down. They had the blink on Batrider ready. He gets a nice catch on Jakiro, taking out some of that ice path usage, which could be so annoying to fight into. They focused down the troll while that was going on, and it was a perfectly executed fight. The overgrowth, the Lena LSAs, everything kind of flashing on perfectly, and that was the exact fight NP needed. That is a big gold swing for them. And even more than the gold, the map control, when you have a tree and a bat rider, just knocking down towers just gives you so much more room to play around with. Lots of gank opportunities. They can easily look to ward up the map. Secret not really having like that ideal gem carrier or someone to play the vision game later on. They just slightly move a step there position there, not knowing the bat had a blink, but probably should have been expecting it uh, fairly soon. It's almost 20 minutes. And also just thinking that the ghost ship was going to be enough damage mitigation and they could fight that one, but not the case when NP get the dream overgrowth off, off like that. I think NP going for a force into Mask Madness build. Very unorthodox, I'd say. The Mask of Madness is becoming more and more a carry item we see on heroes like Luna. The, the four stuff without like the dragon lance, not the, caring about a hurricane pike. He just probably gets this item early on for the HP regen. If you can just farm and jungle it up because you've got the HP regen to sustain yourself, and it actually has become like a pseudo carry. I'm like the old helm of the dominate. People just love this item because it gave you such HP regen. Yeah, also, I guess it's nice to try and kite the troll. You do not want to be up in his face later in the game. Yep. I mean, eventually, yeah, that's the great thing is it, it can turn into a more late game item in the hurricane pike. Even though early game, the four staff is strangely better than the Dragonlance. I mean, you don't even, you'd rather get like your Mask of Madness as a farming item. Even though it doesn't give you stats, it gives you damage and insane attack speed. Dyer's middle tower is under the one thing I am wondering is, does Secret have enough damage? Because in that last fight, you use the boat just for the rum to keep the team alive, but I feel like without the boat, they are a bit lacking. Troll is largely being controlled in the fights. He's not able to hit heroes realistically with all the kiting. You've got the tree roots the Batrider kite, uh, the Lena stun, a lot of, even the rock is a problem for him, so he's not hitting, and then it's really all the Queen of Pain just, you know, damage. Yeah, they, until they get, and I think that's why they like the slower paced game, because they line up each item to dish out damage. Uh, NP, they want to push the tempo, they're going to find Kezu bottom, and they will begin to lock him down, or she have to borrow time, still in the chase, the Yules is there, ensuring one very dead, a bad end. Bada now on a dominating streak, grabbing. DPS talent, extra 50 damage, so he can be another hitter. Combine that with the Luna, and this team NP is not, they on the flip side are not lacking in the damage department. And they have some long range. Comes to Howie. His 
find any heroes on the low ground. Perhaps doesn't want to go to the high ground as he will lose his invis in the process. Their team fight's just so strong, he's not afraid to like roam around with the vision of a potential sentry or obs. <laughs> Looked like they were going to try force a Roshan, but they think better of it with the respawn already coming out. Kezu? Not really the best for a lineup. They have Luna, but no minus armor. Yeah. And Kirby up at the pit. All of a sudden, the boat, the macro part of the ice path get a lot scarier. They'll play it soon. The secret is now going from single minus to double minus once Kezu finishes his. They're playing again, kind of for the late game. They're just going to look to stall this one out. Even mid one, not really going for a fighting build, going for an early Octarine. Which is not like a standard Queen of Pain build by any means, but he's kind of itemizing. He's he's thinking long term, like, what do I see my items looking like at 60 minutes into the late game? And there's definitely an Octarine core in there, so he figures we'll just buy one now. Lada just keeps on finding kills, and once again, it's AUI setting them up. I feel like we just can't talk enough about how consistent his tree has been. Yeah. When they give him tree, he takes over and go back to last game. Uh, the IO ended up getting not getting banned in game one. Even in defeat, I guess Secret thought it was too much of a problem, so they used to ban it. But the, the tree threw and he getting a lot of mileage out of that tree. Yeah. I think it is definitely a like must ban, must oh. pick hero at the moment. Very dangerous. Two TPs coming bottom. AUI almost there with the root. Mid one playing it close. The top tower is also be denied here momentarily. Is multiple TPs coming from secret. Pretty slow game overall. We had some hectic ones yesterday, but this series feels a lot more deliberate, tactical between it. Up now, secret ready to make a move. The soul booster on. Mid one's going to give him a lot of survivability in terms of overall HP. He blinks right into Fata. Started off and now has the bail follow up. They move on to Fata Kezu in position. The Bodhi is crashing through, but it's worth doing the duel. So, wow. most well executed gank, but they just had sheer force of numbers. Look, find the kill. Nina. Down for the count, and that ends a mega kill. Shot. Not letting her get her Bloodstone Suicide off as well. So, they take the charges away. They don't let her deny the goal. Big kill to get for Secret, and they, they saw her farming, pushing out the lane, but they didn't actually have vision of her when they blinked in. Really, heads up play from mid one, just to go in, blink in blind, find the Lina, and then know that his team was going to be behind him to cancel any kind of, like, TP out or whatever, maybe. Well, there's the second Midas. And she, they, they've shown very uh, willingness to take it late in this tournament. Sometimes looking like they want to fight, but left out his top lane, the rock gets dropped, MP! Taking some serious hate, but hey, for a poor troll, that feels like it could well be worth it. Yeah, it's definitely worth the rock. At the same time, for enemy, it's a boy when falling in rock, and enemy, and go over the TCP play. They might not kill the ultimate enemy, and they just bring like a hand, and I guess we could build one on mid, one on top, taking on the troll, a baby hero as well, and now we're here to throw it. They will be playing goal on the road in there. Chasing him down, quick passes are in, trying to retreat into the 3 he goes, he goes with the axe, he needs that slow, put the sun on the mark, Fata's there, bang, I get 4! And 
Bobby, 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 Thank you. 